There was an article recently on Clean Technica. Zachary, who is the editor in charge, he said, are e-revs a good option for the USA? What do you guys think? Are e-revs a good option for the USA? Are they a better choice than electric cars? I mean, electric cars have not taken off in the same way in the USA that they have in other places like Europe or China. So if the USA made e-revs and they are going to start doing that, will this help a lot of people to make the decision to move away from internal combustion? What do you guys think? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. And Zachary said this, Kyle Field visited Volvo Cars Charleston factory this week for a closer look at Volvo's electrification progress, software progress, which has been a bit problematic, and more. In one of his discussions with Volvo executives, a comment about Volvo introducing extended range electric vehicles for the US market jumped out at me. Extended range electric vehicles have been quite popular in China in the past few years, but they have been all but gone from the US market for the past several years. Now, I should point out, his comment is actually not really accurate. If you look at the sales of e-revs in China this year, they only represent about 10% of all new energy vehicles. And that figure is actually declining. So there's more models available now than there ever has been in terms of e-revs, and their sales are not increasing at all. In fact, they've gone down a bit over the last few months. Plug-in hybrid sales have gone down. Uh, they haven't really gone down this year, actually. They're about the same as last year. But overall, the hybrid market in China has been shrinking for the last three months. Zach said this, I understand the pros and cons of an e-rev as I had an early version of one. We had the BMW i3 REX. However, this was a different time, especially when it comes to EVs. That car had just 71 miles of all electric range when new. With such little range and in a market where you couldn't get an affordable long range electric car, the gasoline range extender was a very helpful crutch. Electric vehicles have much more range now and even E-Revs have much more electric range than that BMW iX3 REX had. Give you some context, some of the new E-Revs coming out of China have more than 400 kilometers of range. So, you know, more than, more than 250 miles of EV only range. Even with our low range BMW i3 though, we only use the gasoline engine backup two to three times very briefly in nine months. We spent a little more than $5 on gas during that time. And some of that was from the engine running itself every few months to keep itself fresh. You kind of have to, otherwise the fuel gets uh, goes off. I also remember Chevy Volt drivers from that time and earlier raving about their cars, which had about 40 miles of electric range because they could drive on electricity most, almost all the time, but had a gasoline engine for backup in rare cases where they needed it. But yeah, that's all about e-rev leaders several years ago. The question is whether now is the time for an e-rev revival in the United States or in China, where it's already alive and kicking. Europe, where you also have e-revs on the market and other markets, it feels like this is where several automakers are trying to head. Not only Volvo, here are some thoughts I have on the pros and cons of this idea and potential coming trend, particularly for the US. Now, guys, I've got to respond to the China comments. What do you think about what he's saying about e-revs having a revival in China? Clearly, a lot of automakers in China think this will happen. I don't. And I don't because, guys, look at EV sales in China. They are breaking all-time records. I mean, EV sales in China are up 30% this year versus last year. Hybrid sales are, haven't grown at all. So if you look at the numbers, new energy vehicles, which are a combination of e-revs, plug-in hybrids, and EVs, are completely dominated by EV sales, which represent 65%. And EVs are getting better and better. I think, really, we should focus on EVs in China. Anyway, pros for e-revs from Zach. Naturally, for people who do drive hundreds of miles a day, very uncommon, an e-rev could be a great choice to cover most of those miles in electric mode and then, but really who fits into that scenario? For people who simply don't feel comfortable going fully electric yet because they're scared of not having a gas tank, an e-rev can be an excellent stepping stone to a full EV. 
putting in just enough batteries to be adequate for electric driving most of the time in certain lifestyles, while letting a gas engine pick up the slack in a small minority of situations could be a good way to cut down on the resources needed to build very large batteries for long-range EVs. Cons for eRevs. The company is putting more resources into developing both an EV powertrain and an internal combustion engine powertrain and integrating them. That costs more money, which means a higher costing vehicle. Now, to give some Zach some feedback on that, I've spoken to several engineers in China. They say building e-revs is not quite the same as having two drivetrains. In fact, e-revs are basically a converted EV. They take an EV and they convert it into an e-rev. So the new XPeng G6, the X9, the P7 Plus, uh, all of those, and in fact, also the G7, all of those e-revs will be based on the same exact platform. They're just going to make the battery smaller and they add a small, a small 1.5 liter turbocharged engine, which just powers the battery when the battery is running low. So it's not quite as simple as, it's not quite as simple as having to have two major different drivetrain production systems. Now, I agree with Zach, though, that it's simpler to just have the one technology. So he also says one of the cons of an e-rev is that this also means there are more components that can break, need maintenance, and need to be repaired or replaced. And that is absolutely true. Adding an engine to an EV, it doesn't matter if it's a small one, is leading to massively more complicated car than what it was otherwise. With the amount of battery capacity going into an e-rev, just adding a little more is adequate for the vast majority of drivers. People may buy an e-rev for other reasons than the electric powertrain, tech features, incentives, etc. And then not charge or not charge often. In other words, people, it's true. A lot of hybrid, plug-in hybrid owners, they don't charge their EVs. or they don't charge their hybrids at all. They just drive them on petrol. It's stupid, but a lot of people do this. So they're often going to fuel up the gas tank the majority of the time while lugging around heavy batteries. Now, this sounds really stupid to you probably, but the fact that so many people are doing this kind of proves his point. In reality, there are different situations or lifestyles where an EV, an e-rev, or a plug-in hybrid with a smaller battery than an e-rev may be ideal. I'm skeptical that there's a large market that an e-rev is genuinely ideal for, especially in the US. But maybe I'm wrong. What do you think, he asks. Now, Paul, Paul Foss, who's a great writer and I really enjoy his articles, he said this, he tweeted this, can anyone tell why me why a car with a huge battery needs a range, range extender? Now, it's interesting. There was some data recently showing that in China, the average range of EVs over the last three and a half years has increased by nearly 30%. And the cost of EVs in China has come down by, I believe, 40% in that same period of time. However, I do think there are use cases for e-revs. So this is my response to you, Zach. I do think there are, but only for towing. That's it. Only for towing in exceptional circumstances. If you wanted to tow in the United States, you can absolutely get a very worthy tow vehicle from General Motors right now. I think the Silverado EV it, with 450 miles of real world range is completely capable of towing. But the truth is there's not a lot of vehicles that can tow the large motorhomes and the boats that a lot of people in the US drive. There will be in the future, but there's not that many choices now. In my opinion, that is the only possible use case for e-revs. Outside of that, I don't think they make sense at all, particularly as just an average family car. Now we're looking at cars, you know, the new Tesla Model Y, the one in China that's going to be well, go global very soon, that's going to have 700 kilometers of range. That's not CLTC, that's WLTP range. You couldn't possibly need any more range than that in a regular family vehicle that isn't required to pull a big motorhome or a big boat. So yeah, with EV range getting better and better, charging speeds continuing to get faster, and EV prices coming down, battery pack prices also coming down as well. I don't think there's much of a use case for e-revs, but there is a small one. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. The Sydney EV International Motor Show. If you want to get a 50% discount on your tickets, all you got to do, click the link in the description and use the promotion code that's in the description. Just copy and paste that. Now I should mention there's only 200 tickets available per day. So 
if you go to use the promo code and you can't get a ticket, wait till the next day. Don't wait until the day before the show to get your tickets because otherwise you'll probably miss out on getting the 50% discount.